Why is getting naked the secret to true power? Find out in my review of Kill La Kill, Episode 3. If you are not watching this anime series, get on it immediately. This is by far the most entertaining show I've seen in some time, and it's probably going to be my favorite show of the entire year. It's basically just a showcase for beautiful animation and lots of fan service. So if you don't like fan service, and I mean every possible type, we're talking the stuff from multiple angles, lots of jiggling, you're probably not going to care for this show. But the people at Studio Trigger love this stuff and they truly show it in this episode, but it's also backed by a lot of really great action. We also get to see the very first battle between Ryoko and Satsuki, and it is friggin' mind-blowing, awesome, and just really fun and downright sexy. What's cool about this episode is we're still slowly learning a little bit about the Goku uniforms, and in particular the Kamui uniforms, and we learn about life fibers, and apparently the Goku uniforms are composed of these fibers. Uh, the one stars have like 10%, the two stars have like 20%, and so on, and they can only hold so much at a time. And the Kamui uniforms, which is the one that Ryoko uses, the Senketsu, has about 100% life fiber, so it's like a living suit, essentially. And we find out that Sasuke's family, the Kiryuin family, has this one that is known as Junketsu, which means purity. The actual look of Junketsu is very similar, it's just white, I guess that's why they call it the purity one, but uh, it has the eyes and everything, and eventually in this episode we get to see that Sasuke wants this uniform, she wants it bad, and uh, she breaks into this facility and she tries it on for the first time, and this scene is badass, hilarious, and sexy at the same time. She just strips naked right there, and she goes through this transformation. You don't get to see her full suit yet, but you can already tell it's going to be very similar to the Senketsu form when it's fully transformed. It looks really awesome. Before we get to the big action scenes, there are some other developments in the story. I actually do like that they finally go back to that homeroom teacher who explains that he actually knew Ryoko's father, and uh, he had something to do with the creation of the Kamui, and he theorizes that the Kiryuin family was the one that killed Ryoko's father, but he may not be too sure, and he might not even believe that Sasuke is the one who is responsible for it. There's also another hilarious and energetic scene at Mako's house, and uh, Mako herself is just an incredibly enduring character, and I think she's going to be one of the highlights and one of the most remembered funny characters from the show, and she plays a much bigger role at the end of the episode. But let's talk about Ryoko versus Sasuke. This was definitely the best part of this entire episode. I love how Sasuke's just waiting for her to show up, and then she goes through her very first transformation sequence with the Junketsu, which is really, really detailed and intricate. I love how you can actually see the Junketsu taking blood from her body and going into the individual fibers as her entire uniform becomes red, and then it explodes into this giant sequence, which is Pretty damn sexy, I am not gonna lie. A lot of jiggly stuff here, but a lot of badassery. And then you finally get her uniform, which looks really awesome. It has these giant shoulder pieces, it's all white and blue. This Kamui suits Satsuki perfectly, and then we finally get to see Ryoko go through her quick transformation, and then they start to fight. I love how when they're first sort of sizing each other up and they're walking towards each other, just their power is starting to blow everybody away. It's funny just to see all of the students flying around in the air just from their power, and then they finally start to fight against each other with their swords. And Satsuki really is more skilled with her abilities, and she's even able to just knock Ryoko all over the place. But eventually we finally get the revelation as to why Ryoko is not as powerful as she should be. She doesn't need to be afraid to get naked. She needs to bear it all and have no shame. And uh, this leads up to the sequence where Mako comes in and she basically tells her, You gotta get naked, Ryoko. This is the secret to power. And uh, it really is. It's basically about being shameless and just using your power to the fullest. And then that's finally when we get to see Ryoko's full transformation sequence, which is very similar to Satsuki's but it's still pretty damn awesome, and then they finally get to really go at each other at full power, and this is great because we finally get to see some new abilities, a lot of shit exploding all over the place, boom here, boom there, and then what's even cooler is that Ryoko's sword actually goes through a transformation and becomes like twice the size, and then she goes into this like decapitation mode, and she tries to take down Satsuki, but still, the battle ends in sort of a stalemate, but it doesn't matter. You're so blown away by everything you've just seen that it's almost too hard to process. And at the end of the episode, basically, Satsuki tells Ryoko that if you want to take me on again, you're going to have to take down all of my underlings and all of the students. So, good luck. Seriously, if you are not watching this series, what the hell is wrong with you? This is just pure animation fan service in every sense of the word. Now, I can understand why some people might be turned off by the fan service because it's pretty rampant, especially in the opening. I didn't even really notice it until I watched it again in this one, and pretty much throughout the entire episode. This was a very steamy, sexy episode and uh, very jiggly, but it also had a ton of really, really fun action, some really great fight choreography, 
and just all of their different abilities are just great. I cannot wait to see what else the rest of the series is going to offer. And considering this is just their very first battle with each other, you can just imagine what it's going to be like, like, way later on. And plus, I just want to see all the other members of uh, the student council. Like, there was that one guy you did get to see a little bit when they were experimenting on this one kid with Goku uniforms. And he has this, like, weird little cell phone thing that he was using to attack him. I don't know. But I, I'm guessing that when Ryoko has to fight this guy, it's going to get really, really intense. There's still a lot of questions for this series. Like, how in the hell does this world work? What is the deal with the Kamui in the first place? Like, you know, those are questions you really don't need to ask yourself, though. Because to truly enjoy this series, you just need to look at the animation. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's all over the place. It's bubbly. It's lively. It's explosive. It's vibrant. It's colorful. It's just... Perfect, and uh, I cannot wait to see more from the future of Studio Trigger because they're doing fantastic work. They're doing God's work. They're doing great anime, and you need to check this series out. Uh, this was a great episode of Kill La Kill. I absolutely loved it. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. This series is pretty much perfect at this point. It's just the perfect mixture of everything anime, and it gives credence to why anime exists in the first place. So check it out. 10 out of 10. Badass episode. So how did you guys like this episode of Kill La Kill? Did you like the battle between Ryoko and Sasaki? Did you have any favorite moments? You can let me know with your comments below. And remember guys, before you leave, make sure and give this video a thumbs up. Absolutely one of the best ways to support our videos. That and you can check some of the other videos we got right up top. So, I will see you next time guys. Super Kami Guru 9000, out.